So, this week, oh, actually, I think it was uh, last night, uh, Chami and my wife went to run their usual 4.5 miles. I think they run about 12, 13 miles a week. How many people here run? Okay, yeah, sometimes. You fatty. No. Um, but uh, they were going to run, and uh, my wife went outside, and they both went running like usual every Saturday night. And um, two minutes into the run, they both come in. And I'm like, I'm puzzled. I'm like, what are you guys doing? And my wife was like, oh, it's raining outside. And then Chummy came back, and they were like, oh, it's raining outside. I was like, so? Didn't you watch the NBA Finals when Dirk was sick, and he was kicking LeBron's butt? And he's shooting all those threes and in his sickness, and he won anyway? And, and my wife's like, true. She said, you know what? I'm going to go out, go back out. And they went back in the rain. And so give them a hand. They went, they went outside and finished their run. Right. Uh, um, but I think that that's a good picture of most of us. I think most people, they live, or all of us live what I call a half-fast life. You know, you have some barriers, you have some things that come in your way, and you begin to what? You shy away from it, and you don't really put everything into it. You just put half, a half effort, a half-sized life. You know, it doesn't really go too far. And I think that um, a lot of times, for a lot of us in this room, look, look at someone right now. Look at them and ask them, do you live a half-assed life? And to tell them, stop it! Wow, you're serious. But, he, but here it is. Here's what you have to understand. I'm not even talking about living for God. I'm talking about this attitude, this, this emotive skill to live a full life. It's not, it's really not something you just wake up in the morning and go, well, I'm, I'm motivated to live, to give everything I have to school, to give everything I have to romance, to give everything I have to be successful, to give everything. I mean, you don't just wake up in the morning and say, you know, and become like Lee. You know, studying hard in med school, you know, you know, always studying hard. I can't talk right now, Pastor, I'm studying. Now, that, that's, never, that's not true. But, but you know what I mean, like, you don't wake up in the morning and just become an excellent person. You know, excellence is not, you're not born with excellence. Excellence is actually made. You have to learn it. That's the 180 way. Right? Jesus says, I have come to give you what? Life. Life to the full. I'm, I'm here to teach you how to live life to the full. So here it is. You go, well, you look into your life and you go, is there excellence in my life? Really, is there excellence in my life? You go, well, I'm not sure. How, how do I know for that? How do I know for sure that I have excellence, that I give everything I have and everything I do in my life? Well, you have to take a look. Well, here it is. Let's go to this passage. Today, I want to answer the question, how do I stop living a half-assed life? Because how many people in this room want to give everything they have? You want to live your life to the full. Tell someone right now. I want to live that life. Tell them, amen. I want to live that life. I'm talking about living a full life, right? I mean, I mean, basically, how many people here saw Braveheart, the movie? William Wallace. They come out with the horse, right? And ask that question, if you can live your life one more time. I mean, I know life people are pretty young, and you're like, why do you live that long? <laughs> but, I mean, if you can live your life again, I mean, in the end of your life, if you can live it again, I mean, would you want to be the type of person that would say, well, I wish I could do it one more time. A lot of people live in regret. I wish I could live one more time. I wish I could have did it one more time. Or are you the type of person that would say, I, I, you know what? It didn't matter what my result was. I left everything on the floor. I mean, that's, that's what happens when people meet Woods for the first time and they play basketball. They're like, teach me, sensei. No, they're like, why don't you play some D? Why don't you put everything out there? And he's like, what's, what's 
Chris, I don't want to play that series. I'm too good. <laughs> no, I'm too good. No, but seriously, the truth is, a lot of times people never live a full life, be, not because of obstacles or because of any other reason, it's because you chose not to. You chose not to run the race. You chose not to give everything you have. And it has nothing to do with anybody else except you. Tell someone, it's up, it's up to you. What kind of life do you want to live? So the question is, how do you stop living a half-assed life? And this text will show us. Jesus replied, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus replied, love the Lord what? Your God with what? With? With all your heart. With all your and with this is the first and greatest commandment. Now, you can stop here and say, well, Pastor Sam, are we talking about uh, giving everything to God? Well, yes, but we don't even need to go there. We can extract the principle. Here, Jesus says, if you want, right, if you want to do something excellent, the greatest important thing, and that could be God, it might not be. First of all, it might not be that in your life. You might be striving after something else. I'm just talking about the principle of excellence. And this is what Jesus says. I mean, you've got to be kind of, you know, slow not to understand the key phrase in this text. What's the key phrase? Love the Lord your God with what? All. Tell someone all. That's the secret of giving. All. All your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. So, you come to this place... Now, do you, how many people here want to be successful in your life? I'm not even talking about, like, loving God. I'm not even talking about, like, living the spiritual. I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about what, what Connie talks about, Rockefeller diamonds. I'm talking about coming to the spot looking extra fly. I'm talking about, you know, before I die, I'm going to test this. I'm talking about that type of ambition. I mean, everybody wants to be successful. They want to achieve. And you know what? Um... The C, former CEO of GE, Jack Walsh, he says, if you want to be successful, you just got to do one thing. You know, you know what he said? And you go, Who, who's that? Who's Jack Walsh? That's why you're not successful. You got to read up on people that are successful. He, he basically owned NBC, Conan, Jay Leno, The Office. He's the guy that wrote the checks for those shows. They're like, oh, wow, he's an important guy, important dude. But Jack Walsh says that if you want to be successful, you have to do one thing. You have to keep the most important thing. What? Like, I have no idea. The most important thing. Because if you want to be successful, the one thing you've got to do is what? Keep the most important thing the most important thing. Oh, bro, so Jesus says the same thing. He says, if you, you cannot what, serve two masters. Either you're going to what? Love one. And hate the other. The great culture theologian Bobby Ray, B.O.B., and Bruno Mars talks about in their song, Nothing But You, the same idea. You know how that song goes? All over the world. What is it? Oh, yeah, beautiful life. Tim, you know you know? <laughs> All over the world. Beautiful girls all over the world. Right? Jay, you know the song, right? <laughs> I could spend, I, I could, I could chase in, right? Spend my life um, wasting, but they got nothing on you, baby. And then he says this, and I was like listening to this this week, and I was like, wow. He'll be, he knows what he's talking about. He goes, I'm trying to chase skirts, living in the summer sun. But what was the next line? He says, um, I, honestly, I lost more than I won. And then, in the end, he says, honestly, I ended up with none. Oh, that's a good, good. What, is, what is Jesus, what is Jack Walsh, what is B.O.B. talking about? When you're distracted or, what, divided in your attention and focus, you lose. It's simple. When you are distracted, when you give when you give something to everything, say, say that with me, something to everything. Something to everything. See, when you give something to everything, what do you end up with? Nothing. Because we're so divided in our affection. And it, just doesn't have, it doesn't have to be with just God, it's anything with life. This is a skill that Jesus is talking about. We give something to everything, meaning we're so spread thin. 
We want to be good at everything. We want to be like this. But the truth is, Jesus says, if you want to be excellent, how do you stop living a half-assed life? Well, the first principle we learn from this text is what? Real simple. Read this with me. Give everything to what? Give everything to just one thing. One thing. You go, really? That, that's simple. Give everything to just one thing. Love equals what? You know why? Love, well, L-U-V, equals zero? Because when you really love something, I'm talking about anything, and I'm going to talk about God in a minute, you leave, no, you leave nothing behind. You give everything to God. Amen? You know, my wife, and this is funny when you get married, and I mean, when you have an awesome relationship like us, for about a decade, we still are jealous of each other. You're like, what do you mean? Well, like, for example, like, come on, we're watching a movie, and there's a supermodel on, right? She's like, you think she's pretty? That's a trick question. <laughs> I mean, if a girl, if your girl or your wife asks you, you think she's pretty? What are you supposed to say? <laughs> like, hell no, she ugly. She's just a Victoria's Secret mom. She ugly, she a hoe. <laughs> That's the right answer. Yeah, no. Now, for example, but you know what? You can't lie in your face to your wife. I mean, she could be physically attractive. Now say that, and she's like, what? <laughs> and now I'm like, uh, yeah, she, she ugly. <laughs> because it's, it, it's ridiculous to think about it this way, because a lot in our culture, our curse is mediocrity. We accept something half. Well, we're okay with that. But my wife, she wants all of me. I mean, I understand. She wants all of me. So she's even jealous for even a thought of me. He goes, listen, he goes, I want you to worship me, not Victoria's Secret model. I'm not saying I do. I'm just saying, is she, is, you think she's pretty? No, no, no. And even the thought of it, she's jealous of. Because she wants everything. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. What? That's love. You leave, you, you leave nothing behind. You want everything. You want, you're so jealous, you want them to give you everything. Now, let me just tell you why. Look into your relationship with God right now, okay? And uh, many of you believe in God, try to follow after God, but sometimes your heart is not in it. Ask someone, is your heart in it? <laughs> is your heart in it? And you go, well, uh, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I, I want to follow after God. I mean, do you give him everything? Be honest, right? If, do you give him everything? Hell no, I don't give him anything. How am I supposed to give him everything? I don't give anybody everything. I don't give myself everything. Well, that's the issue. The issue is real simple. You want to change your relationship with God, you got to look at the competition. You can't give all because you're distracted by other things. And you know what? I don't even need to bring what those things are. You know what they are in your life. There are things in your life that's taking God's affection from him and you struggle with it. And that's really what you love. Right? Jesus says you can't, you can't serve two masters. You, you either love the one and hate the other. So let me ask you, what is what competition? What are the competition? What are the competitive things that's taking your affection from God? What are they? For some is Victoria's Secret models. Some is real hot guy. I don't know. I don't know what your darkness is. And I don't frankly, I don't care. But I'm just telling you that if you want to change and give God everything. Then the issue is, what, what, are the, what are the things that you're holding back? What's taking it from you? You gotta look into that. Remember, the Spirit of God will show you what that is right now. 
in Jesus' name. Okay, let's go down. So, love equals zero. Now, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mouth. This is the first and greatest commandment. Okay, now here it is. You go, Pastor Sam, you're me. You want me to give everything. You're pointing at me. Because, but I want you to know I'm a tender guy. I'm a tender girl. I try to love God. I have good intentions. It's not like I don't want to give God everything. I just want certain things. I just want I don't know why. I struggle with it. I'm sorry. And I want to come back to God. And I want to give God everything. You just got to have a hard time. And this is why... You have to catch, learn to differentiate this. Learning to give everything to something is simply not about feelings. Following God is not about feelings. You're like, no way, really. Relationships can't love any feelings. You know people that are moody in your life? They wake up in the wrong side of the bed, so what, they're not going to follow God? Oh, I'm, I'm moody, I'm not going to worship. I'm having a bad day, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just not. No, relationships can, can be about feelings. It's about commitment. It's about focus. And you go, oh, yeah, you know, my heart is good. My heart is good. Let me just tell you this, people. There is a famous pastor that said this. The road to, the road to hell is full of good intentions. You're like, damn, that's me? It's just true. Like, for example, I can, I can have good intentions as a father. Right? Nathan, you know Nathan is four now? I think he speaks like he's 21. You know, just this week, this kid is like watching these super book movies from the Bible, and he's telling me I'm Goliath. And he's David. He goes, you have sinned against the Lord. You must be punished. I'm like, this is my job, man. And, and you know, he's talking to me like this. I mean, I can, I can be a father with good intentions. I can say, you know what? I'm going to spend time with my son and never do it. And then when, he's, and when he does turn 21, you think my intentions are going to matter? You look in your own relationship with your dad. You look in your own relationship with people that you, know, you care about, you look up to. I mean, would their intentions really matter for you in the end of the day when the result didn't happen? No. Intentions do not change the emotive part about our life. Tell someone, intentions mean nothing. You go, but Pastor, how can intentions mean nothing? Intentions are, it's my heart. See, people, I mean, sometimes I wish I could slap you <laughs> to, to help you change. Because feelings don't change you. Focus does, commitment does. I mean, this is what my son does to me. He teaches me emotive skills. He, he knows that my laptop is competition with him. So on Monday, he'll go, Daddy, I mean, this kid is heavy now. He, he jumps on the bed, and he goes, no more working, no more meetings, and he shuts the laptop off. And then I tell Nathan, I'm like, buddy, I can do both. He goes, you can't do both. You're always working. Play with me. I can teach you all about Pokemon. I can teach you about the hunter. There's a million Pokemons. I'm like, oh no, please. I don't want to. But that's our problem. The problem is the intentions make us believe that we can economize both. Human beings think they can always do both. You can always juggle your life because you're in control. You're smart. You can always do, you know, basically that's why you're always stuck and you don't change. It's an emotive skill. Emotive skill is prioritizing your life so that you can make the most important thing the most important thing and the number one master the number one master. And so you can make one focus and you do it. And that's part of growing up, people. Part of growing up is making tough decisions that you don't want to do, knowing to choose them because they're the best for you. You can't do both. So watch. So how do you stop living a half-assed life? Well, secondly, this is the skill. What does it say? Tell someone, tell someone this principle. Don't economize. What does that mean? It means intentions are not good enough. They're not good enough at all. It means that if you want to make, if you want to really love something or someone, you have to.
to not play with the competition. You have to kill the competition. That's, and, and the problem with our relationship with God, people, let me just tell you, I, I don't even need to look at your life. I, I tell you what the problem with our relationship with God is. You just economize. You put in with whatever else. You, you know what? I'll get it right eventually. I have a good heart. That's, you tell yourself that. And eventually, that's why you don't change. Because that's not excellence. That's not giving something everything. In the end of the day, when you really love something, zero is love, meaning there's no competition. You kill the competition so you can make that the most important thing. Today, I want to pray that you make God the most important thing in your life by choosing it. Not because you feel it or you feel it today or feel it tomorrow, but because you can prioritize the most important thing in your life. That's part of growing up. That's an emotive skill. Choosing and making difficult decisions. That's what repentance is. And I want to call us to that. So let's pray together. Stand. Father, I want to come before you tonight. Spirit of God, I want to pray that you would show us right now in our relationship with God and in our life. We could kill two birds with one stone today if we can get this principle down. How can I live a full life? Not a half assed life, not a 90 degree life, where I keep just only giving half effort. First, I pray that right now we would we would see certain things in our life that we're going to have to drop out of our life. We're going to have to prioritize to make the most important thing the most important thing. So I can really love. Whether that's people in your life, whether that's God in your life, that's the emotive skill that we're going to learn today. So lift your hands with me right now. Let me pray for you. And I want you to pray with me this prayer. Father, Repeat it after me. Father, sorry for being dumb. That I think I'm smart. And I can do both. That I can juggle my life and still make you the most important thing. When that's impossible. Today, I want to make some hard decisions. I want to learn to prioritize, not economize you, not economize the people I love, not economize my calling. I am done economizing. I am done selling things. I want to become today a person that leaves everything on the floor for your purpose. I love. Help me change today. Will you pray to the Lord right now as you made that prayer? Holy Spirit, I want to pray this is mode of skill of prioritizing. Making the most important thing the most important thing. This skill would be developed today. And I pray, God, as we look over this week, we would be able to say it's time to let some of these things go in my life. I'm going to kill the competition to make God number one in my life. Whatever is competing against God, I will kill. What is competing against the people that I love, I'm going to kill. I'm going to prioritize. I'm going to give it all.
Holy Spirit, I know you're bringing conviction in some people's lives right now. They're feeling the tug in their heart. Now that tug is the Holy Spirit. He wants to help you process to prioritize so that God can become number one in your life again. Now remember, it's not about how you feel. It's about developing this motive skill to be able to focus and give just one thing everything. I pray today you would kill the competition. You would stop economizing and put God first place in your life by choosing it and making some tough decisions. Father, give us the grace to do this today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap. All friends, come here, come up. Give us a